Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Friday, March 3rd at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're here to do what we ordinarily do. And we didn't do it on Wednesday, so we're doing it on Friday because just sometimes life just gets in the way. We're going to read the daily lectionary texts for the, today and talk about it and say a prayer and see how God's going to interact with us today. So uh, let me open in a word of prayer for us this morning. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the many gifts that you do give to us, and we're grateful even for the struggles uh, that exist in our lives as well, that you use to call us closer to you in greater dependence and greater faith. So Lord, as we read these texts today, I pray, Lord, that you would use them to transform us into more and more into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to start with Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. In Psalm 148, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon, praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth you see monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, 
Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 22. So now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God and walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees that I am commanding you today for your own well-being. Although heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord your God, the earth with all that is in it, yet the Lord set his heart in love on your ancestors alone and chose you their descendants after them, out of all the peoples as it is today. Circumcise then the foreskin of your heart, and do not be stubborn any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt, seventy persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in heaven. And from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and lay bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our gospel text today comes from John chapter 3, verses 22 through 20, 36. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salim because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified, here he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. And back to our psalm, Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. 
tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statue to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham, and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came and young locusts without number they devoured all of the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all of the firstborn in their land, the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold, and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham, his servant. So he brought his people out with joy. His chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And our last psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and I hope in his, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. These are the words of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Those are some uh, lengthy psalms that we've read today. <laughs> they you were. know, Psalm 22 and Psalm 105, those were both rather lengthy. And there's, they a, are. there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff in there. Hmm. Where might we start today? Where might we start today? I wonder, mm -hmm. let's, let's go ahead and start with John 3. Usually yes. we get around other things and we'll right. go gospel first. No, it sounds like you wanted to say something with that. Well, no, I, that's, that's actually what I was thinking as well, um, was the John. And so it's John 3, right? Yep. Um, John three twenty two. No, as, as we were reading all of them, um, 
you know, all, all of that. That's what I actually flipped to Psalm 22 because I was trying to go back. I mean, I was obviously listening when you were reading it, but it's a, a little different feel to it when you read it. But everything else that we read and and um, it's it's this praises, this acknowledgement, this power, this authority, the goodness of God. He remembers his covenants. But um, even here in this John passage, this is where um, John is kind of questioned and he's like, I have to become less for him to become more. Mm -hmm. And then that's everything else fits around that as far as the the role of Christ. And, mm -hmm. and that that was my thought is right. that seems to be the the overwhelming theme today throughout is just the role of Jesus and exactly right. what it is that he did and the goodness of God. All right. Um, and I was thinking that same thing, Natalie, um, that uh, obviously John 3, 22 through 20, uh, 36, it follows after the whole conversation that Jesus has with Nicodemus. And interestingly mm -hmm. enough, I'm preaching about that on Sunday. Right. Uh, and so we, we get this um, contrast then between Jesus is coming, interacting with a, a Pharisee who was a, you know, a, a teacher and a preacher and a holder of the law, mm -hmm. one who would have understood all of the Psalms, the Deuteronomy passages, all these things. Um, and there is now tension between John the Baptist, well, not tension between John the Baptist, but those who are following or asking questions. Right. Um, Jesus himself has said that John is the greatest among those born of women, but the least in the kingdom of God is even greater than John. That there's now a shift in priority between all of those things that came before, which were very good and very right. important, but now Jesus is here to fulfill all these things. Even this whole idea of there is one who came from heaven to explain these things to us. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but we reject it. It's almost as if we are so focused on worldly things, mm -hmm. um, or even worldly histories, or, or traditions, or the ways that we used to do these things. And again, none of those were bad if you're holding fast to biblical teaching. Right. But there's something even better here now. The one who actually descended from heaven, he is testifying to what is true, uh, that God is true, that he speaks the word of, the God, of God, that the spirit is given without measure, and all these things are in the hands of Jesus. And now we have the choice. We can uh, obey the son and receive all of the blessings that he has for us, or we can disobey the son and endure the wrath of God. And who can endure? Who can endure the wrath <laughs> right. of God? Um, but John himself is recognizing, like, you know, he was a, he was a popular guy. It, it says no, even it now people are going out to him and he's baptizing, but he's still pointing people to Jesus. Right. And so that, that humility, the humbleness anyway, right. of recognizing, hey, if the, if, the, if the bridegroom is here, then the friends rejoice in that. But back off. It's, right. it's, it's his show. And I think that's where the Pharisees and the scribes miss it so often because it's they they were pointing to God. They're following the law. They're going right. to Old Testament. They're, they're trying to do what's right. But then when Jesus comes, it's a threat to their authority. It's a right. threat to their power. And then you have John here who... Like you said, he was a popular guy. I mean, he was paving the way. He was walking the road, pointing to God. He was he was opening up that path for when Jesus came. And he had everything to gain by staying in power as far as this popularity and this people are still coming to him going, you know, look, this is happening, questioning. And instead of him taking that and, and trying to somehow shift that focus back to him. He says, you know, for this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. Right. And all along, he has recognized that he has a role. Right. He has a role. And his role, when Jesus came, his role was fulfilled. He had right. pointed to him. He had opened the, the pathway for Jesus to come and said, no, here he is. And he recognizes Jesus for who he is, which right. I think... You know, doesn't always happen. Doesn't always happen, or or even just that idea uh, again in John that it says, um, you know, he proclaimed God, and people just uh, you know didn't follow his testimony, and 
you know, um, you know, I think I think I guess if we jump back to Deuteronomy real quick, uh, that whole idea of the the people of God were chosen by God. He talks about how, um, you know, I'm the one who who brought you out of Egypt. I'm the one who, um, and then the Psalms as well. Right. The, the, the yes, recollection of the things. The, right. It's like the whole of the Old Testament. The whole of the things, you one. know, and oh, yeah. and it's saying like everything God created, everything God created, and He chose you as a people, and uh, and I'm gonna. I'm going to do these things for you, but now your response, uh, right. your response is to walk in the ways of the Lord. And right. so that whole idea of being called by God, called for a purpose, God providing for us and protecting us, um, and and even that that whole idea of you know you're going to go you're going to go to places that are probably going to be uncomfortable, right. new places anyway, but God will provide for you there. And right. how do you trust? How do you enter into a new situation and believe that God is still there? Right. Well, you you got to remember all of the things. Like you went down to Egypt with seventy people, and now you are as numerous as the stars of heaven. Mm -hmm. God has protected them. God has provided for them, even in their difficult times. All of those years of slavery and oppression, they were still able to survive. They were still able to multiply. And now they are called into a, a, a new relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now, you know, we get into that Hebrews passage um, and, you know, talking about, you know, this is, you know, this is the result of what God has done. He has identified with us. Right. He has experienced our sufferings. And now he is that great high priest um, who, who makes intercession for us. So called by God. We are the people of God. He's with us in the midst of the challenges. He's called us to a high purpose, and he's providing the way uh, for all of this to take place through his son, Jesus Christ. So, hmm. And he's inviting us to respond in the same way back to that Deuteronomy. You know, you shall, you shall love the stranger because that's right. who you were. Mm -hmm. Christ came as us. He, it's the same thing. He's not mm -hmm. asking us to do anything that he didn't already do and right. fulfill and when there are those difficulties when there are those struggles he gets it right of all he gets it he is not a, a god on high that sits and and you know just dings us no right. he came to us right became he, one of us yeah. right and so um sympathy not empathy right. he lived it he lived it. Sympathy. Right. You know, he sympathizes. That verse 15, um, right? For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin. Hmm. Right. And so he lived it. And he was capable of living it fully without sin. Right. We can't get there, but we're offered... Right. Forgiveness and grace and mercy through him. Right. And so, but, you know, him living that in no sin, there is this, it, it's somebody worthy to, to follow and to um, enter into that relationship with. He has, he has done the work. Right. He's not just a, an example. He is an intercessor. He, right. he leads us and then he pulls us out right. he pulls us along as well right. it's just like right. look you know jesus is praying for us he is the high priest he is making those intercessions for us um you know uh, that psalm uh psalm one sorry psalm 22 that we did yeah, at the very beginning very sometimes i forget how long that psalm is uh because we 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 remember the snippets of it related to uh, Jesus saying, you know, the, the first the first line on the cross, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right. Um, but then all of the rest of it, it's uh, pointing forward to Jesus, obviously. Um, but even, even to know that um, when humans are experiencing great distress, mm -hmm. uh, we can remember that Jesus himself experienced great distress right. when, when, uh, 
you know, illness or injury or whatever it might happen to be, we have that capacity to cry out to God because he's already, he's already done this. He's right. experienced this and, and in the fullness. Um, and I think it's just a good reminder to all of us. We, we don't have to come to God um, with everything cleaned up and perfect already. Right. You know, we come into his presence recognizing that we are wounded and broken people, um, not just from external things that have happened to us, but even our own sins that, that, that cause woundedness and brokenness from within, um, where Jesus was able to do all of this life without sin, and he's able to welcome us. And so even in, even in coming to church, you know, come as you are. You know, right. yes, there are times that it's appropriate to put on you know, your best as you come before the Lord. But uh, as, as we see from Psalm 22, sometimes our best is really just acknowledging the brokenness that we're in right. um, and crying out to him because uh, he is going to be the one that is uh, strong when we are weak. He's the one that's going to lift us up when we fall. Yeah. Hmm. You know, that, that last, the last couple verses of Psalm 22, you know, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Right. Hmm. Well, I know last week we were a little bit long, right? So maybe, maybe we might week. be a little bit short today, but uh, yeah. Well, yes. certainly encourage all of you to continue to read your uh, lectionary texts, to stay in the Word, um, to to read, uh, to take the time intentionally to read um, longer passages of Scripture. Um, you know, short devotionals are fine, and and reading a few verses here and there is fine. But if you take the opportunity to read larger, uh, larger uh, passages of, of the text and to see how they interconnect with one another, I think it gives us a fuller picture of God's glory. And so that's certainly my challenge and my encouragement to you. Um, let's see, we got uh, church on Sunday. We got uh, two services again, 9 o'clock and 11.15, Sunday school in the middle. Do we have any um, anything in particular that's going on? I think Just second Sunday of Lent. I think um, that's it right, right? now. I don't okay. think we have anything else scheduled Great. for now. Okay. So. Well, why don't you uh, go ahead and close us in prayer then? All right. All right. Heavenly Father, um, as I come before you today, I just offer you praise and um, thank you. Thank you that you sent your son. Thank you that we do have a high priest that does understand it and has walked it and that you... Um, still invite us in and that you have chosen us to join um, you into this relationship and that you um, you are there in the difficulties you are there in the high um, good times um, you're there through all of that and may we always uh, recognize that and offer you praise in all times in jesus name we pray amen amen thanks everybody for joining take care have a good day bye-bye